The C-SPAN networks bring you long-form public affairs programming from the nation's capital and are a public service of your television provider. C-SPAN, created by cable. Would raise your right hand, please. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Thank you very much. Now I understand you have, might have some introductions of your own. Yes, I certainly do. I'm very proud to introduce this morning my daughter Stephanie and her husband, Paul Levesque. And I have... Yeah, please stand up. Yeah, right. Thank you. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. And I have wonderful friends who have traveled uh, from around the country to be here today, so I'm very appreciative of, of their presence as well. So thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, well, at uh, this time, the floor is yours uh, for an opening statement. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chairman Rich, Ranking Member Shaheen, and distinguished members of the committee. I'm honored to have your consideration to serve as the head of U.S. Small Business Administration. I'd like to thank Senators Blumenthal and Murphy for their kind introductions. And it was nice to be on a really even playing field today. <laughs> I'd also like to express my gratitude to President Trump for this opportunity to join his administration and his confidence in me. As an entrepreneur myself, I have shared the experiences of our nation's small business owners. We are more than our products and services. We are people. We are families. The small businesses that are the engine of our national economy are driven in part by people working to put food on the table, pay for kids' braces and swimming lessons, save for college, and prepare for their own retirement. Whether it's an organic farmer or an app developer, with one employee or 100, we can never forget that small businesses are people with goals and values that cannot be calculated just on a profit and loss statement. If I have the honor of being confirmed as the head of the SBA, I will do my best to advocate on their behalf. My husband and I built our business from scratch. We started out sharing a desk. Over decades of hard work and strategic growth, we built it into a publicly traded global enterprise with more than 800 employees. I am proud of our success. I know every bit of the hard work that it took to create that success. I remember the early days when every month I had to decide whether I should continue to lease a typewriter or if I could finally afford to buy it. Yes, believe it or not, that $12 a month at that time made a difference in our budget. Like all small business owners, I know what it's like to take a risk on an idea, manage cash flow, navigate regulations and tax laws, and create jobs. Since stepping down as CEO of WWE in 2009, I have worked to help more people have the opportunity to pursue those goals. In my travels throughout Connecticut in 2010, 2012, when I was campaigning, I met with more than 500 small business owners, touring their shops, restaurants, offices, factories, and sharing ideas during roundtable discussions. Job growth was a pillar of my campaign, and because small businesses are responsible for half of all private sector jobs and the majority of new jobs, they were my focus. And for the past two years, I promoted women in entrepreneurship as co-founder and CEO of a startup called Women's Leadership Live. I wanted to share my vast experience with others who were launching startups or looking to scale their businesses. Through live events and webinars, we educate entrepreneurs about things like applying for a loan and developing a business plan. We also work to build their confidence. I always say that even entrepreneurs with the best ideas sometimes need a little wind beneath their wings. Women's Leadership Live hopes that by sharing our stories of success and failure, our networks of contacts and resources, and our strategies for addressing challenges, we can give small business owners the confidence that will help propel them forward. Small business owners do not just need confidence in themselves. In order to take a risk, they need confidence in the economy. Should I have the honor of being confirmed to lead the SBA, I will work to revitalize a spirit of entrepreneurship in America. Small businesses want to feel they can take a risk on an expansion or a new hire without fearing onerous new regulations or unexpected taxes, fees, and fines that will make such growth unaffordable. We want to renew optimism in our economy. Small businesses have had some tough blows in the past decade. 
I know what it's like to take a hit, and I've learned it's not how you fall, but it's how you get up that truly matters. Early in my career, when we were very young, my husband and I declared bankruptcy. We invested in a company we didn't understand and trusted people we shouldn't have. When that company went under, we were left holding the bag. We worked really hard to pay off those debts until we realized we just couldn't. Bankruptcy was a really hard decision and a very tough time in our lives. We lost our home. My car was repossessed in our driveway. We had a young son and a baby on the way. We had no choice but to work hard and start building again so we could support our family. When our daughter Stephanie was born, a perfect little baby so full of promise and potential, I took it as an omen that things were going to be okay. We owed it to her and to our son that we would make it okay, and fortunately, we did. As I visited small businesses all over the country through Women's Leadership Live, I have seen that same resiliency over and over again. Entrepreneurs are fighters. They work hard, and when they get knocked down by a recession or a natural disaster, or simply a change in consumer demand, they turn to their creativity to make it better. But sometimes they need a helping hand. If I'm honored to be confirmed, I will work to guide SBA as that helping hand in the most efficient and effective way possible. I believe in leadership by example. As a CEO, I never expected employees to do anything I was not willing to do myself. I believe in setting expectations and holding people accountable, but trusting them to do the job for which they were hired. If confirmed, I look forward to working with the SBA staff. I'm eager to learn from their experience and their expertise. I will listen, and their ideas, concerns, and recommendations will be taken seriously. I know there will be new challenges in a government setting, but I will commit myself with the same responsibility to deliver value to the taxpayers of America as I did to shareholders of my company. Over the past two weeks, I've had the pleasure of meeting with many members of the committee, and I appreciate the kind words of encouragement I have received. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak with you today, and I'll be very happy to answer your questions. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. Um,